God, just like go build something, just go create. You know, I think people waste a lot of time um, learning or ideating, like talking about ideas. Just go start. Just go yeah. start. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey everybody, we're here with another episode on online growth systems. Today I'm here with Haley Friedman, who is the head of marketing at Improvado, and she actually has her own blog as well. So we're going to be diving into that. And Haley, do you just want to give everybody a little preview of kind of what your expertise is in and what they could learn in this podcast? Yeah, so um, I'm a, a growth marketer. Um, I came from a pretty untraditional background, so um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. But since then, I've become pretty obsessed with marketing, um, started my own marketing blog, um, have been a, an early marketing employee at a number of startups, and I'm now the head of marketing at Improvado.io, which is a mm-hmm. tool that helps marketers aggregate all their data into one place. Awesome. When you say there that you're, you know, aggregating your data into one place, is that like your followers analytics, like how many clicks you're getting or what your you know, the backgrounds of your followers are, what kind of data? Yeah. So, um, you know, before I was at Improvado, where I'm at right now, I was um, at marketing, I was doing marketing at a company called Realty Shares. And, um, you know, I was the first, no, the second marketing employee there. The company was only 15 people, um, got hired Mm -hmm. by a guy named Mark Spera, um, who's now the co-founder of my blog with me. But um, (laughs) as (laughs) as I was marketing there, um, one of the biggest challenges for me was always, um, the, the numbers, the mathematical part, right? Like Mark wanted me to report on the data every week, mm-hmm. we have meetings with our CEO. And, um, I loved the creative and like, um, impactful aspects of marketing, but I hated the <laughs> collecting all the data so that you could build reports and actually understand what's going on. Like, right. while it was hard for me, it's obviously so important as a marketer to know where your money is going and if you're spending it efficiently. And so, um, you know, as marketers, we're looking at data in Google Analytics, we're running ads on Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest and Snapchat and Mm -hmm. Um, all these different platforms and in order to understand how our marketing is performing overall you have to actually manually log into each platform every week and export the data and import it into and then create formulas where you can actually create a little excel dashboard or whatever or maybe maybe you're more advanced maybe you use tableau or looker like some visualization tool but regardless like what i found is that it took me like 10 to 20 hours a week to actually put all that data together for our weekly meeting with our CEO. And I just found it to be like extremely frustrating um, use of my time. Um, so and the opportunity cost alone isn't worth it. Well, you could be spending time growing the business instead of measuring, you know, what you've been doing. So like in optimizing campaigns, you know, trying new things, being strategic. There's so many ways I'd rather be spending my time than manually aggregating data. So Um, so that was like the biggest pain point for me as a marketer. And, you know, I would talk to Mark and be like, there's gotta be a better way. Like, um, I don't want to, I don't want to do this anymore. So we eventually we just decided to hire someone to be our, our data analyst. And, um, (laughs) he did it full time. Um, and that was his full time job in addition to some other, you know, data things he did. But I would always say, you know, like Brian, go figure out. A way to automate this there's got to be a way to make this easier and, and he looked into it a little bit and we, we never ended up following through and so so that was that and then um, a couple years later I decided that I was ready to move on Realty Shares grew to 120 people and I like the startup world so I wanted to be mm-hmm. back in the startup world again so um, I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do next. And, um, there were a lot of different options. I could do marketing. I'm here in San Francisco. There's endless opportunity. I can join any cool startup company. Um, but what I realized was that I really love marketing and, uh, Mark and I actually have this marketing blog called growth marketing pro. And so I have this blog and I have actually a meetup group called badass marketers and founders. And so <laughs> 4,000 people here in San Francisco, and it's actually 20,000 people globally. Wow. 
Um, so I, I love marketing and I do it in my spare time and it would be cool if I could do marketing to marketers. So right. <laughs> it'd be awesome if my day job involved, you know, I could leverage my, my side stuff like my blog and my community and in my, in my day job, my life would be way more aligned if the company I was working for was a marketing tool. So I went on a hunt for a startup that was a marketing tool that needed a head of marketing. And um, a friend of mine actually told me about this company in Provado. They're looking for a head of marketing. Um, so I went to go meet with them. I honestly didn't have um, very high expectations. I didn't know very much about it. And they started telling me what it was. And I was like, wait, this is exactly <laughs> the tool that I was looking for for the past three years I needed desperately yeah. a tool that was going to like automate the whole process this whole like tedious manual process of collecting marketing data and improvado minutes but all of a sudden like all of your data just syncs into like every single platform slurps mm -hmm. together into one place sends it into your tableau or looker if you want to look at it there or you can look at it in the dashboard itself but it just like solves that whole problem and I was it like, automates it yeah and, and you were like dang it where were you three years ago at my last job <laughs> so I was like yeah you know what so I, I ended up joining the team and I'm super excited that I can you know be sharing this valuable tool that I know is helping so many marketers and I can share that with my community and stuff so it's been a blast that's super cool. So before we dive into more about you, just for somebody who's listening right now, who's like, oh my God, I need this tool for my company right now. Where, how can they go about finding it or what's the best way for them to utilize it? Yeah. Um, so they can visit improvado.io. It's I-M-P-R-O-V-A-D-O dot I-O. Um, and so they can visit the website there to learn more. Um, mm -hmm. Recently, I put together a piece of gated content that I've been sharing and people have been really loving and it's kind of I, I shared my marketing dashboard in, in Excel, my like Excel version, the version that I, before I used Improvado um, to automate it, but that I was, but how I was looking at my data in Excel, like all the different tabs and how I was looking at it every week and every month kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I've been sharing that. And if, um, if the audience wants to take a look at that and download it for themselves, they can do that at improvado.io slash podcast. Okay, perfect, perfect. So even if they are, they're not quite ready to use the tool itself, they can look at you know, what you've done in the past with your spreadsheets and stuff. And so, so what's like the perfect business that could use Improvado? You know, what kind of, like what's like their marketing budget where it makes sense for them to utilize a tool like this? Or is it just, if, if you're on multiple platforms, this is for you. Yeah. So it's, um, it's definitely for, it's, I wouldn't say very small business. So brand marketers and agencies, marketing agencies. So mm -hmm. I can imagine as an internal brand, like I was at Realty Shares, we definitely had this problem, but even more so if you work in a marketing agency, then you're um, aggregating data for not only yourself, but for the countless clients that you have. Mm -hmm. So it's an even bigger pain point. So brands and agencies, um, I would say are, are the target. That's, that's perfect. And I know we have a lot of uh, other agency owners or people who are starting their own agencies. And I mean, if even if you have, you know, more than one client, if you start getting two clients, it's going to cut your time in half, right? Because you only have to look at it for one client or one time, you know, for two clients. So totally, totally. it's hugely helpful. And, um, and even like people that are marketing consultants that are maybe an individual marketing consultant, I think it's a really helpful tool to have in your back pocket if you're helping other um, brands with their marketing and, and a lot of people are struggling with marketing data just like in, given the industry and how many new platforms there are to use it's like an, inc it's an yeah. incredible thing because there's so much opportunity for us as marketers to try different things but that just means that our data is like dispersed in all these different places mm -hmm. so what kind of metrics are, is Improvado measuring is it tracking like everything from clicks to shares to uh, actual backgrounds of you know, the, the demographics of your followers and what kind of metrics does it look at? Yeah, so it, it looks at whatever you want it to look at. So any data that you are looking at right now within the different platforms or anything that you're building in Excel to pull the data together, you can do with Improvado. So it essentially just 
automates the process of getting all your data into one place. And then you can build tables and charts and widgets to look at exactly what you want to look at. You can compare different channels to each other. So it's very uh, customizable, right? So depending on what your goals are and your objectives. Right. That's super cool. Okay. So Haley, let's dive more into your your blog a little bit and kind of tell everybody um, the link one more time and then tell them like what it is that you write about and why you write about it. Yeah. So um, the blog is called Growth Marketing Pro. And um, like I said, Mark hired me at Realty Shares. He was my boss at the time. And the two of us would, were the only two marketing people on the team for the first at least year and a half we were there. And so um, what I, I didn't know a lot about marketing at the time. And he taught me a lot. And I taught myself a lot by going on the internet and reading like Neil Patel's blog and like, oh, yeah. All, all, he was just like my favorite, you know, I love his content. And so I read that book, from the, that book, the, his blog from like cover to cover. Uh, but anyway, as, as I was learning and like implementing things, I would learn things about marketing and then some of them I could try at Realty Shares, some of them I couldn't. I would help my mom with her business, my brother with his, just so I can test out different marketing strategies. And um, we would just love sitting around and, and like chatting about ideas and different companies and how we would market them and we just realized that we should start a blog and start talking about like all the <clears throat> all the different marketing strategies we've tried what's worked what hasn't um so we started it about a year and a half ago so um and we've been working on it pretty hard ever since on the side and it's grown from like zero to like fifteen thousand visitors a month and it's growing mm. every month so yeah, it's it's been a fun um, it's been a fun project in SEO, learning a lot about um, SEO. So how many different languages do you guys have blogs in? Is it only English, or do you do other ones too? Yeah, just English. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. The reason I ask is because I, I, I just read a blog post uh, like two days ago from Neil Patel talking mm -hmm. about one of the things that took him from, you know, average to like, holy shit, you know what I mean? One of the top guys is he started publishing in, you know, three different languages oh, wow. um, because you're just opening yourself up to different markets. So maybe that's something that the audience can take away too is if you're a blogger and you're watching this, you know, you know, we have a blog, you have a blog. Um, and obviously we're both big fans of Neil and that's one of his biggest recommendations too. So. Um, totally. Yeah, that's wild. So tell me for, for, for all, for, again, for the bloggers, like kind of tell me how you built like that side, you know, like, or, like, let's call it like your business for now. Cause it, you know, pretty much is, I mean, you can easily monetize that. Yeah. How, do, how did you build your audience from complete oblivion to, you know, 15,000 readers a month? I mean, that's a decent sized newspaper in some areas, right? So yeah. you kind of integrate it with your, did you have your existing group like that, that meetup you had did like, or did one come, was one yielded from the other? Yeah. So I started, um, Mark and I started working on the blog and just writing about the different marketing strategies that we had and, and consistently posting blog posts, probably like five a month or so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as I was working on building a blog and I wanted to build our email list, you know, I was thinking about maybe hosting some events here in San Francisco. And so I had been um, a part of this Facebook group called Badass Marketers and Founders. It was founded by Josh Spector um, a couple of years ago and he built this community. And so I've been to some of their events and they were really awesome. So he would host fireside chats with different marketers and founders that would tell their growth story. Mm -hmm. And um, I found out that he was moving to LA. And so I reached out and I was like, you know, I've been attending your events. They're really awesome. Would you want to keep the momentum going? Even though you're leaving town, I'd be happy to be your stunt double and, and keep it going. Right. So, so we met and, um, and he's like, let's do it. Let's give it a shot. So, um, so he kind of handed over this community to me and I've since taken over and um, it's been incredible. So I've gotten to meet really wow. cool founders, founders, um, and really like thousands of people came pouring in wanting to connect and um, chat on podcasts or kind of like chat about marketing. So um, it's been an incredible uh, experience that opened a lot of doors 
for collaboration and it definitely helped um, grow the blog to kind of gain exposure for the blog and help get backlinks for the blog and build up that authority. Sure, sure. Especially in that, because Google even like looks at like, like geographical areas. And I'm sure if everybody in San Francisco is sharing your posts, I mean, somebody's going to search for some kind of marketing thing in San Francisco and it's, I mean, it's going to, you're probably going to show up big time and then they'll be aware of their events and then, you know, they're just kind of feeding each other. You know what I mean? That's like, kind of like what we like is that like the videos feed the podcast, feed the newsletter, feed the, the blog, right? For you, it's the blog and the events. And, uh, I think that's so cool. Like, and, and what a smart way to, to kind of become entrepreneurial, even though you weren't the one to start that Facebook group and start those events that you, you know, went in there, you took over the reins and, you know, you went for it. You know what I mean? And I, I think that's so cool. And most people don't even, that doesn't even occur to them. Like they wouldn't even like see that opportunity. You know what I mean? They would, but essentially it was just like this huge gold mine just saying like, Hey, this big community that is continue that's already established. It's not like you purchased a business or something. And the, the founder is leaving. Who's the host of these events and somebody needs to jump in or somebody could or should jump in there. And you saw that and you did that. Do you know if there's anyone else who reached out um, to the, you know, to take over or were you like the only one who saw that? So it's funny, the day I reached out to Josh over LinkedIn, um, he was like, so I, I mentioned it and then, and he's like, do you have time to meet today? This was probably at like 10 a.m. or something. He's like, do you have time to meet today for lunch? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like in an hour. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll make it work. Yeah. It. And so I met him and he's like, you know, it's a good, so it was like 12 o'clock. It's like, it's a good thing you reached out to me when you did because at one o'clock I was about to like Venmo this guy who was going to buy, try and buy the list, like the, the community from him. And so I can wow. to sell it. <laughs> wow. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. So it was crazy timing. Um, and so aside from that offer, I don't know if any other individual reached out the way that I did, but sure. I don't think so. Yeah, it's crazy. It's, ever, it's become my, yeah, it's a, my philosophy. My mom has always told me that, you know, you don't get what you don't ask for. Yeah. <laughs> so you just gotta, just gotta ask, you know, the worst thing they can say is no, but you know, you definitely don't get what you don't ask for. So. <laughs> that is awesome. And, and, and it's even cooler if you like, look at like the the, 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 the thought process behind it is Josh could have per or profited from that, but he wanted to keep that group like organic and um, entrepreneurial and not like a business. He wanted to keep it more of a community, right? So when he saw the opportunity to either make a profit or have someone in already in, in the community continue to keep it as a community, you know, he wanted to keep that going. And the, like, I'm just like, that's amazing. Like, I've never heard of it. Like, we've had a lot of people on the show, but like, not like none had like that kind of a story and I think that's so cool that you like went out there and what are the odds of the timing too that you texted him and an hour later you had lunch and an hour later he would have sold it you know what I mean and at that point if you would have waited just till the afternoon the opportunity would have passed you know what I mean and that just speaks that when you get that like gut instinct you know that you see something I mean, don't like, oh, I should create a proposal or send them a resume. Just like, uh, oh, I mean, I should ask you, oh, did you do anything like that? Or did you just send them a direct message and say, hey? <laughs> yeah, no, I just messaged him on LinkedIn. <laughs> That's awesome. That is so cool. Jake, now, now that somebody's going to hear this and they're all going to, they're all going to start messaging the leaders of their <laughs> event bright groups. Hey, if you're ever planning to move, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, totally. Reach out to people you admire and offer to help them. Like, people, I'm sure, could use extra hands. It's a great way to build relationships and get your foot in the door. Totally, totally. So, tell me um, about yourself and like, how do you say you have like this this burning passion for like marketing? That no matter what job you were looking for, it was a marketing position at whatever it was. So, tell me, like, did you? grow up knowing that like someday I want to do marketing like you know no kid starts out like that right so Definitely not. um so yeah when I graduated college I did teach for America for two years so I taught eighth grade English in the Bronx and um while I was teaching I had an idea for a mobile app that I put together a team of people from across 
the country that I'd never met in person. And we built this app together and launched it on the app store. And uh, we won a student startup competition. And we were invited down to South by Southwest where I pitched our idea in front of hundreds of people. And um, so that was kind of the first time I ever saw the whole tech startup world in person. You know, there's all these young people wearing t-shirts with their logo on it and they're all <laughs> excited. And um, I just thought it was so much fun. And um, I was like, this is what I want to do forever. Um, so when my Teach for America commitment was over, after two years, I left and decided, you know, I really want to work at a startup. So the startup I was working on um, kind of fizzled when our two software engineers got recruited to work at Microsoft and Facebook. So, <sighs> Dang it. <laughs> Come on, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. <laughs> but it was a, a great, you know, um, jump off point for me in, into the whole tech world and, and basically realizing that, you know, you can have a great product and you can have a great team, but if you don't know how to get customers you don't know how to get someone to sign up for something then you kind of don't have anything worth anything so I yeah. just realized I had a lot to learn about how to start a company overall but especially how to get Joe Schmo to sign up for something or to buy something so mm -hmm. um, I really wanted to learn it was this whole gray area for me that I didn't understand and I realized how critical it was so um, decided I want to join a startup I was living in New York then um, and so I wanted to join at the ground floor and kind of watch found some founders with experience and, and to kind of see what they do to start up a business. And so I joined as the second employee to a mobile advertising startup in New York and was there for two years before I moved out to San Francisco to start up Realty Shares. But um, my job in New York, although it was a startup and I learned a ton, it didn't end up being like a consumer facing product. So there was not a lot of marketing. Um, right. So were you mostly doing like B2B kind of stuff then? Yeah, it was B2B and it was a lot of like right. account manager role, which is what it ended up being. And so I was like, I still mm. want to know marketing. Like, what is this marketing thing? How do you do it? And right. so I, I moved to San Francisco with the goal, to like get a job in business to consumer marketing and learn what it's about. And so I lucked mm. out. Um, I had 45 phone and Skype interviews before I left New York. And I ended up getting the first, the first interview that I had, I ended up, that's the company I ended up being an offer from. <laughs> no way. That's hilarious. <laughs> so see like, and nowadays, like, you know, people have to apply to like a hundred of them, or like you said, 45 and you actually got, you found the golden nugget on the first try. That's funny. The first one, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that was real chairs and that was Mark and he's now my, Co blog co-founder so that worked out mm -hmm. <laughs> but at realty share is kind of where i developed my understanding and passion for marketing and it's grown ever since. and you gained your expertise in it so that way you could confront like improvado and say hey like i know you guys are a startup i can take you from a to b right really? i can be your head of marketing I'll, here's where i worked these are the skills are acquired you know what i mean and here's my plan you know to execute where you guys are now to get to be so really and part of the cool part of being a marketer at a startup is just that you get gain this knowledge you have so much on your plate and there's so many different channels you can try and so you you gain a lot of experience in like all the different channels whereas if you know you're a marketer at a larger company um you can kind of go deeper and more granular in like one specific silo and become like an expert on one thing which is also valuable but i'm i like having my hands full with Lots of things. <laughs> sure, sure. You, you like getting a taste of everything, you know, juggling. Yeah, I like um, trying everything. Being that jack of all trades. Are you at Improvado right now or are you like at a, your home yeah. where you write? Or? I'm in like a soundproof conference room. <laughs> okay, nice, nice. So just slap, uh, slap a sticker on the outside that says uh, Haley in podcast. <laughs> podcast on air. <laughs> <laughs> nice, very cool. So um, let's kind of dive into advice that you can start giving entrepreneurs. Now they, they, we've really got an idea for your passion, your background. Um, we've already gotten some gold nuggets already that come to my mind that I'm already like, oh, she said this, this, and this, I'm going to put on the blog post. You know what I mean? But like, what are some like actual, like tangible takeaway tips that they can do? Like, and you can get as like as specific as possible as, as you want, like 
you know, we're talking, if you're saying go to this URL, click on this button, you know what I mean? You can get as broad or as narrow as you'd like. Yeah. I mean, I guess it, it just depends on like where you are in your journey. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people like starting out getting into marketing. Um, or Let's do one of each. Let's do one for one, one little tip that you can think of for like somebody who's like brand new, you know, they're just getting introduced into the realm. And then somebody who's been doing it for 10 years and they, they want like just one little thing that's going to help them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, for the people just getting started, I'd say like, I feel pretty strongly that you don't have to, you don't have to like go to school for marketing per se to be a good marketer. I think you can learn a ton um, on the internet by reading about, you know, from influencers or even like the little marketing courses that they might sell. Like you can learn a ton on your own about marketing. And the best thing you can do is just like learn and then go implement. Um, hmm. So even if it's, even if you can't do it for your company right now, cause you're not in a marketing role or the company, you don't have the say to try certain things or the time or resources, um, you know, offer to help someone else offer to help your parents with their business or a sibling or a friend, um, and do or it even a nonprofit, nonprofit or, or like reach out to, um, a business or, or influencer or someone that you see that you have an idea that if they tried this, it could work, you know, and do it just because you want the experience to be able to say, you know, like I had this idea, I implemented it and it grew their audience or grew their customer base from zero to X. Um, having that, that experience under your belt and having that like headline, some, whether you need it on your resume or you need it in, in the story that you tell when, when you're interviewing, um, having like some tangible examples of, of something that you've built, something that you've grown is huge, hugely helpful. Right. Right. Almost like, a like whenever we go to do a go to a client who's considering us for a video, we'll have an entire web page just dedicated to little samples of projects we've worked on in the past. So it, like that's more specific for people in video. But if you're doing uh, marketing, even like a testimony, if you could get like one from your family or like a nonprofit, like you're saying, or a business that you know of, even if you did it for a couple of months for free, just to be able to get the number one the experience, number two to see if you really this really is what you want to do, and then you can actually get that. Uh, testimonial or even take screenshots and say I took them from you know zero followers they didn't have a Facebook page I opened up the Facebook page and I you know was only spending you know a hundred bucks a month on you know from boosting some of the posts you know we got them to a thousand followers and you know in a month you know what I mean so those those are really gonna help you kind of get from A to B right yeah so what's one kind of tip you can give for somebody who's a veteran in the field yeah um so the first one that comes to mind is just like this whole data thing. <laughs> it's just like, sure. um, you can be a really advanced marketer and, but I kind of guarantee that a lot of people out there are struggling with this data thing. And even if they have it all under wraps, like they, they have a process and they, they know what they need to look at and they know what they need to report on every week or month or so. Um, I still kind of guarantee it's probably taking them a lot of time. And so, um, if you want to be efficiently using your team's time, then let's not waste it on data. Let's, you know, automate that. Don't make that anyone's job, <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah. Your marketers time, like your team's time, aggregating this data in spreadsheets when it can be automated. Mm -hmm. So, um, that's just a tip. That's something that I didn't know there was a tool to solve that until pretty recently. So I bet there are a lot of other marketers that don't realize that there's an easier way to do totally. it. So, um, yeah, check out improvado.io and, and automate that, that crack. <laughs> that's, I love it. I love it. So tell me kind of some of the features. Can you, can it integrate with pretty much anywhere you can spend a dollar online? You can, it can get data from that spot. And then my second question is, can you export like a report or something. Let's say that you're uh, an agency, you have a couple clients um, and you want to export like a PDF version of just their information. So that way they don't see, you know, your other clients stuff. Yeah. Even better that you can have your clients have their own private login so they can log in and check out their own data without even asking you. Oh. So, so yeah. So for clients, for agencies and um, consultants that have a lot of clients, your clients will reach out, you know, say, 
you might be providing weekly or monthly reporting, but you know, they might reach out off of that schedule and say, how is Facebook doing? How's X, Y, and Z doing? And it mm -hmm. kind of throws you off because in order to get that data, like I said, you have to log into the platform you have to do that whole process. Yeah. Um, one off, like every question that an agent, a client would have. So if you can provide them a da each a da their own dashboard where they can go in and see without asking you, that's um, a time saver on both ends. Right, right. Yeah, I agree. So what other uh, golden nuggets can you kind of, and, it, and this one is not pertaining to marketing. This can be pertaining to blogging, entrepreneurship, events, you know, holding an event. What's like one other thing that like, if you were given a billboard and you could put one thing on a billboard for people to like keep in their minds, what would that be? Hmm. My own billboard. I just like go build something. Just go create. You know, I think people waste a lot of time um, learning or ideating, like talking about ideas. Just go start. Just go yeah. start. Yeah. Take the first step. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. And I, I even that's interesting that you're saying that because some artists, you know, don't even do idea phase. They'll just take a piece of clay and just see what happens you know what I mean or they'll take a canvas and see what happens and I think more more entrepreneurs and more creative digital creatives need to take the the traditional artists you know mentality on that like you know you even though you don't know what the sculpture is going to look like when you're done sometimes just taking that first you know chisel or whatever you know will help you find it right like I, I think it, that's actually a line from like I think it's like Michelangelo or Leonardo DiCaprio, Leonardo DiCaprio, not him, <laughs> Leonardo <laughs> da Vinci, and he says, um, uh, the, the man is already in the clay, I just have to find him, you know what I mean? So, cool. yeah, I think what you put out, you get so much back when you put something out into the world, I don't think people really realize that, it can be so small, but I think when you start pushing outward, putting your, your creations in whatever form that may be, out into the world, it comes back like tenfold over time. And so um, just getting started. Right, I agree. So what's one, one um, piece of material that people can consume that you highly recommend? It could be a book, a movie to watch, a documentary, um, a podcast to listen to. What's something that they can consume that you recommend? No, I honestly would just say don't consume anything. Stop, <laughs> Stop <laughs> consuming and start yeah. creating. Just like, just, just stop and just build. <laughs> I Here, like, we'll, we'll change that. You can say this interview <laughs> is the last thing, a piece of content you can consume, you know, and now start creating. So. <laughs> Pause this video, stop listening to the podcast, you know, exit from the blog you're reading right now and go do something. That's Haley's advice. So. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I would say, you know, like for, and I think about it now with like Netflix and stuff, right? Like for every, I can spend the next hour watching a show on Netflix or I can spend the next hour like writing a blog post. And what is going, what am, what's going to, what am I going to get more from essentially? And I just know that there I've put out content and blog posts out into the world and you know whether they've grown Google's acknowledged them SEO wise or someone read it and it turned into a partnership opportunity a job opportunity a new friend like it just it's crazy what can come when you put things out into the world and so that's what I would encourage you to do I like it here's another question for you what's your favorite platform to create on um, I'm a huge fan of LinkedIn. I really um, have gotten a lot of engagement there. And I feel like it doesn't bother my, my friends and family back home with my nonsense. It's kind of just my professional community. Right. Um, and so I really like sharing on, on LinkedIn. Sure. So when you say sharing, is it photos? Is it like just a little a thought of the day? Or is it actually like you're taking your writing abilities and making LinkedIn articles? Yeah, so I don't make LinkedIn articles, but I think short form content creation on LinkedIn mm -hmm. as a way to share other things that I'm doing. Like, um, so sure, say sure. I wrote a blog post or I'm having an event, like creating mm -hmm. content for LinkedIn around 
around that and inviting people to either read or partake in the event. Yeah, I love that. I, I'm actually next week on the podcast, we're interviewing somebody who just wrote a book about how to maximize your LinkedIn network. So interesting that you're mentioning that it'll be two in a row then. <laughs> so um, for people who are just starting out and they, they know they have that creative spirit in them, but they just don't really know how to take the first step. Would you recommend kind of like jumping in the deep water and say like, Hey, like write, start a blog, open up a WordPress site or something like that and start like blogging away. Or do you think they should start small just to kind of build up and get a taste for it? Like making little thoughts on LinkedIn at first and then slowly making them longer until they're long enough to be a blog post. Yeah. I think there are ways to, to test out. Um, I think you have to find what works for you. If you, if you like podcasting mm -hmm. or you like my like video content or Mm -hmm. photography or memes or blog posts like, <laughs> you know everyone's got a different thing to share or with with the world and a different way that they're mm -hmm. comfortable I really enjoy um I really enjoy writing but but I also enjoy like public speaking which makes the events and like hosting events fun for me mm -hmm. um but I would say that actually Quora is a great place to, to get your feet wet writing and seeing how people react. So there's lots of questions on there. You can just answer ones for fun or you can answer ones that have to do with your business. And, um, and you'll get a pretty quick read on, on how, whether people are upvoting them and you can kind of engage there. I think that's a great way to get ideas about things to write about and then you can take that and, repurpose it on LinkedIn or you can repurpose it on your blog or wherever else. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. That's a great, Quora is a great idea. Um, so I, I'm going to ask this, even though I kind of, I'm predicting you're going to say Neil, but who is your favorite creator? <laughs> yeah, Neil's my, my, my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Neil, if you're watching this, Haley wants to take you on a date, you know? <laughs> I, I feel like I put this out in the world. Neil, like, we're we're gonna hang out at some point so I can pick his brain about about marketing. Um, oh, totally. I hope you invite me because I also love him. So you can come. You can yes. Come. <laughs> yes. We could sell tickets to your group, right? We can make it an event. We could have him as a public speaker. Yeah, yeah. We gotta we gotta get him to come up to San Francisco so I can host the fireside chat with Neil. Perfect. I love it. I love it. So, uh, what is like one tool besides improvado that you recommend other people to look into it could be like something physically like that just helps you in day-to-day -day life or it could be something that helps like their marketing their creative process so to give you an example for me something that like dramatically increased my productivity was investing into an ergonomic keyboard because i found that like my typing speed like doubled you know what I mean? And it was a hundred bucks for the keyboard, you know, but you're like, oh, it doesn't help that much. You know what I mean? But it made me, my hands feel great. And it doubled that. So like, what's like a tool or a product or a purchase that somebody could get that you recommend? Interesting. Um, yeah. So I'm a big fan of webinars and automated webinars. I actually mm -hmm. write a lot about it on my blog. If, if anyone is interested in learning mm -hmm. um, more, but um, I just think, Hosting webinars is a great way to engage with potential and current customers. It's a great way to acquire leads by inviting people to a valuable session where they're going to learn something. Um, and even more than webinars, I and I use for webinars, I use Webinar Jam. So that's the tool that I think is like incredible for webinars. And I've tried like a ton of them and have really yeah. cracked experiences and so I love webinar gym um, and more than webinars I love automated webinars so um, a lot of people don't know about automated webinars but I actually learned about it from Neil Patel <laughs> in one of his automated webinars and um, so webinar jam has a tool um, there's an us or a sister company called ever webinar and so I let, love using ever webinar for automated webinars Basically, that just means you can create a webinar, record it one time, and then reuse that recorded webinar um, forever and ever, and kind of like be continuously inviting people to that webinar where they're having like the same experience that the people that attended the live webinar had, but it's recorded. 
Um, and so you can kind of like sell or engage with customers in your sleep. So that's uh, my favorite tool. Awesome. We'll include a link to Haley's blog in the description below, to Improvado in the description below. Neil Patel will be in the description. Uh, <laughs> and webinar will, the webinar jam will definitely be in the description. We'll also have everything that Haley and I have discussed today and all the tools she recommended on onlinegrowthsystems.com slash blog slash show notes. You can find it there, everything listed there and links uh, to Haley's social media as well. So Haley, where, where do you want people to follow you? Do you want them to go to the blog or is there a social media profile that you are active on that you like them to go to? Yeah, they can, they can follow the blog. Um, got lots of great, great emails to share if you subscribe on there. And, um, and writing engaging email copy is something I'm pretty passionate about. So you'll get to engage with me there. Otherwise, LinkedIn, like I said, follow me on LinkedIn. Awesome. And the last bonus question of the interview, Haley, what is one thing that I haven't asked you that you were kind of hoping I should have asked or that nobody has asked you in a podcast? Because I know that you're on podcasts all the time. So I yeah. want you to think of something that nobody has asked you or you haven't maybe discussed, you know, on your, on a podcast that you're like, dang, why has nobody asked me about this yet? Because a ton of people could get something from it. <laughs> um, hmm. So I don't, I don't talk about this in a marketing context very much, but I'm very interested in psychology. Um, I do think it feeds into why um, I'm, I can be good at copywriting and understanding people and, and how that plays into marketing. But super passionate about psychology, studied it in college, um, and I do write about it in, on Growth Marketing Pro. So interspersed amongst like the marketing posts, there are some um, like personal growth, um, mindfulness blog posts buried in there. So I would mm -hmm. encourage you to go, go find them, some stuff about kind of like man time management and um, Enneagrams, which is like a personality type test that I encourage everyone to take. Um, and just a couple other fun, like personal growth posts. Right. Cause not even, not only for yourself, but as a marketer, it'll help you too, because then you'll understand why people make the decisions they do. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and exactly. you have to use it ethically, of course, but you know, you can use it because if you have a great product like you, you know, you're saving companies time and money, which is a good thing. So if you use your knowledge of psychology to, to help sell to help your closing ratio of how many people are aware of you to how many people are your paying customers you know you're using it in an ethical way that's helping them you know what i mean so i For totally sure. agree I with you that's an awesome yeah. awesome point in life too just to, the better you know yourself and the people around you and you can it'll just help you understand how to communicate with them awesome i love it well thank you Haley, for being on the show yeah thanks for having me it was just super fun Come from a town where most of the people are so close minded. They go into school and they work in a job, but they don't even like it. I won't be put in a box. Nobody telling me what I should rock. Nobody telling me what I should drop. Cause I do what I want and just know I don't stop. Recording till four in the morning, they snoring. I'm pouring my soul into every story. I'm writing, producing, I mix it, I master, I'm building my craft and I'm not looking back. I've been going doing things I wanna do when I want to.